All right, guys, follow-up video to our 380 test. So we had Liberty Civil Defense. We had Barnes Tech XPD. We had Federal Punch. We had Gold Dot. And we had Hornicle Critical Defense. Okay, so can't fit them quite all into the frame there. I'll squeeze that into the bottom. So we had these five ammos. It was a five-part test. And we're going to go through each cartridge, show you what they looked like before and after expansion. And we're going to show you the retained weight and all that fun stuff. All right, guys. So we're going to start with the 380 Auto 90 Green FTX Critical Defense Standard Pressure. I do not have any unfired versions of this bullet in 380. I fired everything I had at the range. This is the fired projectile, that characteristic dimple in the middle from the little red rubber tip. The long pedals. I mean, this looks exactly like a 9 or a 45 in uh, critical defense. Um, Hornady's self-defense ammo is very, very, very consistent from caliber to caliber. This, I mean, if, if you didn't know any better and I told you this was a 9, you, you might believe it just on video at least. Um, so it's supposed to be a 90 grain projectile. We're weighing in 89.3, 89.4, somewhere like that. Um, I would guess, I would just guess that that red tip would get us to 90, pretty much 100%. We're going to do our diameters here on camera. So diameter number one, if I go lead to lead, is 0 .485, 0 .485. 90 and point 480, point 480. Okay, so we get those three diameters. And uh, blew a light if you saw that. Fun, right? <laughs> Second up is the Liberty Civil Defense 50 grain. 50 grain. This is the unfired projectile. I showed that on my video there. Let me see if I can get some more light out of my overhead light here. Uh, this is the unfired projectile here. And it's this huge, massive cavity with this very thin, thin, thin sidewall. It almost looks machined and not formed. It's a really neat looking projectile, 50 grain projectile. Um, all of those pedals shear off and leave us just a disc that is the bottom of that hollow point there. So the pedals all shear off. This one is the only 380 that splashed me from three yards away. I mean, the hydraulic effect was amazing. And that is 40 grains, pretty much. So it retained 80% of its weight. Ironically, with these low-weight hollow points, typically we tend to see really, really big hydraulic effect on the first jug, not a lot of, expand, uh, not a lot of penetration. This penetrated as deep as all the other 380s. So uh, kind of impressed with that. Um, the expansion numbers I'm not going to bother with because, well, I'll just take one, but it's a disc. There's, there is no expansion. Um, it is a 0 .355, 0 .355, 0 .356, excuse me. I, I need my reading glasses, I guess. 0 .356, which is what it should be. Third up was our Barnes TAC XPD. Barnes TAC XPD. This is the unfired projectile. It's got our nickel case, the characteristic copper hollow point that is very, 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 very deep. Very deep hollow point from Barnes. This is supposed to be an 80 grain hollow point. We're going to give it away. 80 grains, pretty much 100% weight retention. We expect that with an all copper projectile. And what do we see? We should have uh, should be five pedals on this the way it does. Uh, should be five, it looks like anyway. And three of them started opening, didn't fully open. Two of them didn't open at all. Okay, so not full expansion on this from a very, very, very short barreled Ruger LCP. And if I try to go across this hollow point any way that I can, I'm getting 0.370. I'm getting 0 0.392, 393, somewhere in that neighborhood. And if I go this way, I'm getting 0.470. Okay, so you be the judge. This one didn't do so well out of a short, short barrel. 
Next up was Gold Dot. Um, and I was able to buy some of this in 50 round boxes, so it's nice for practicing. Gold Dot is going to come in a silver case. It's going to be a really cool looking hollow point, really shiny silver inside. Um, and the silver always comes up to the edges. You got these little scallops of lead that come all the way to the edges of the projectile on every gold dot I've ever seen. Um, every gold dot I've ever handled looked the same pretty much. It's just smaller because it's 380. Um, the gold dots were supposed to be 90 grain as I throw stuff. Sorry about that. Supposed to be 90 grain projectiles. Here is the fired projectile here. Okay, so here is the fired projectile. Not quite that characteristic gold dot star that we see in other calibers, but again, um, you know, the petals held together well. Um, looks fine, you know. Um, retained weight 82.4, so not 100% weight retention. Gold dots typically are pretty close to 100%. And interesting enough, if you look really closely, this lead actually ripped away all the way to that copper base. You can see a little spot of copper there in the center, which is the bottom of the base showing through. So it really ripped. That's a thick, thick base and a very, very, very soft lid is what this looks like. So anyway, let's get our expansion numbers real quick. So we're going to go tip to tip on the lid. I got 0.538. And if I turn here, well, if I can do it, I'm kind of fidget fingered here. I turn from there to there, I get 0.537, looks like. And here to here, I get 0.535, give or take about a half of a thousandth, okay? So over half an inch on the gold dot, lots of expansion on the gold dot. And then last but not least was the Federal Punch, which was an 85 grain. Federal Punch looks like this, it looks a lot like the Punch in 9. And the punch in 45 is a skivved hollow point with a, for a 380, a pretty deep, thin lead cavity at the top that gets to solid lead at the bottom. Brass cased, neat looking projectile. Here's your expanded projectile. Looks like that. Jacket almost, almost separated from this guy. Did not, but almost did. Started as an 85 grain projectile, weighs in at 82.6, so almost 100% weight retention. And again, we expect that in most of our defensive hollow points. And let's go tip to tip on the lead and see what we can get for measurements here. If I go tip to tip, I'm getting about 0 .499, 0 .499 on that one. I'm getting... If I can get this right, I'm catching the jacket with that. I'm trying not to catch the jacket, but I don't really have a choice there. Um, it's not working. I'm fidgeting too much. Here we go. That is, uh, if, I, if I catch it that way right there, that's about 0 .476. 0 .476. And then last but not least, if I measure there to there, I'm catching a lot of jacket with these measurements, but that's okay, I guess. Try to go lead to lead if I can. Um, that's going to be about 511, 0.511. So pretty much your average expansion is getting right around a half an inch. So those are our five 380s we tested all out of the Ruger LCP Custom with a 2.75 inch barrel to see if they would expand from a pocket gun. Um, I hope this information helps you pick your caliber. If you have questions, please leave it in the comments. Guys, we appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Um, I've got a link to every video that was shot prior to this that uh, leads up to this follow-up so you can see all five ballistic tests. And if you have any questions, leave them for me. I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you so much and have a great day.